Hello everyone, welcome to this course on supply chain digitization. This course is offered by Indian Institute of Management Mumbai and jointly taught by the three faculty members including myself, Professor Priyanka Verma and my colleagues, Professor Sushmita Narayana and Professor Devabrata Das. We are going through this week on analytics in supply chain management and in the last two sessions if you remember we have focused mainly on network optimization. The two topics that we have covered in the last two weeks includes decisions related to locating of facility considering their coordinate system. For that purpose we have used gravity location models and also we have seen a, a decision to take in terms of the selection of the facility given that we have some options of selecting a facility where their fixed cost and their unit variable cost are given to us. So considering this fixed cost and variable cost, how can we use a very simple tool like break even analysis to decide about facility selection. This we have seen through a simple case in our previous sessions. This is the third week for the session on network optimization and today we will be talking about capacitate facility location problem. But before that we will also try to understand the scenario that how a demand allocation model works. So to understand this model which is related to demand allocation and capacitate plant lo uh, location model, let us uh, see a simple case and try to understand the different scenarios which are given for a network optimization model. Suppose there is an executive which is working in an Indian company and is making critical decisions with respect to the location of the facility and also about how the capacity of the facility should be allocated so that the cost of supply chain turns out to be minimum. So here we have seen that in this scenario the decision is not only about selection of the facilities but also about how the market should be assigned to these facilities. So we can see that the decision includes about the facility location decisions and also about how the market should be assigned to these facilities which are already located. Now here we are trying to consider the customer service requirements and you can calc uh, you can consider this customer service in terms of the response times also. So there are two uh, telecommunication equipment manufacturers which are given to us their names are Maxiu and VV and these are the two companies who are involved with uh, manufacturing of the telecommunication equipments. If we talk about the company which is Maxui, they are primarily operating in the northern and in the eastern regions of the India and their manufacturing facilities are assumed to be situated in Delhi, Gurugram and Kolkata. However, they are trying to serve the markets in cities like New Delhi, Kolkata and Lucknow. So you can see that they are primarily operating in the northern and the eastern regions of India. In parallel there is another uh, company which is uh, termed as Wavy over here. They are focusing majorly in the southern and in the western region of the India. So they are trying to provide telecommunication equipment to the markets which are located in Chennai, Hyderabad and Mumbai. That is why we have uh, referred it as the, southern, uh, as the southern and the western part of the country. Whereas their manufacturing plants are primarily located in Chennai and Mumbai. So these are two companies serving the country in two different ways and here we are trying to find out how the demand should be allocated for these two companies. Now in parallel to this there are some more information given to us which is about the capacities of the plants, what are the market demands and also what is the variable cost which includes both production and transportation cost per thousand units shipped. 
So, here we have calculated these cost by considering both production and transportation cost over here and also the fixed cost is also considered uh, this is taken as fixed cost per month for each of these facilities. We already had a discussion about fixed cost in our previous sessions. So, let us see the whole data which is given to us about this given scenario. As we know that we are talking about the supply chains of two companies, the first one is Maxui and the second one is Wavy Communications. The supply cities are all clubbed together over here for both the two companies and parallelly the markets are also clubbed over here for both the companies and the production and transportation cost per thousand units are given to us in parallel the monthly capacity for each supply city is also given and the mon monthly fixed cost is also considered over here. So, if you also see we have been given with their monthly demands for each uh, markets and uh, it is trying to specify the whole data over here. So, if we try to formulate this problem and try to provide a solution this is ensuring that how the supplies which are available from the different manufacturing facilities are transported to these markets uh, to fulfill their demand, but in a way that the total cost of transportation is minimized. So, here if we analyze this data, we can make a statement that the company Maxui has a total production capacity of 76,000 units per month, whereas the demand is coming as 34,000 units per month. Uh, the company has got a capacity possible capacity of producing more than the demand which is a good scenario. It means that this company has got enough manufacturing capacity possible so that it can fulfill the demand easily. Similarly, if we talk about the another company which is Wavy Communication, its production capacity possible is around 48,000 units per month and demand is around 30,000 units per month which again confirms that the available capacity is high enough to fulfill the demand of the uh, overall markets for this particular company as well. Now, here the company has to take a decision that how the products which are manufactured at their uh, production facilities should be allocated to these demand points or the market points such that the cost uh, of transportation is minimized. So, we have seen this type of problem. Let us try to formulate it, uh, formulate this problem in a simple way and this pro problem formulation is referred as demand allocation problem and which we can solve it very easily with a demand allocation model. So, let us try to formulate this problem as well. We have been given with the information about unit cost of production and transportation from IIT manufacturing facility to the JIT uh, demand point. So, the CIJ is the per unit cost of production and transportation from IIT plant to JIT market. Similarly, we have also been given information about the demand of all the JIT market and the supply limits of all the production facilities. So, if this is a scenario, we have to take a decision that how much quantity of products should be uh, transported from which plant or from which manufacturing plant to which demand point so that this total cost of transportation is minimized. So, this is a very simple demand allocation problem as we can see. Suppose if we have to take a decision about the quantity to be moved from ith plant to jth market, let it be xij. So, if this is our decision variable, our objective is to minimize this total cost of transportation this becomes C i j into x i j and summation over i and summation over j. This will give us the total cost of transportation from ith plant to jth market. Now, if we talk about the constraints which are available over here, if you have observed there are primarily two type of constraint. One is the demand satisfaction constraint and the second one is the capacity constraint. 
So this was our supply chain. Let us look into this once again to understand our constraints. So if this is the set of plants which are existing and which are indicated by the index i and j is the index j which is indicating the set of markets. So we have a simple supply chain for a set of plants uh, and a set of markets and we now have to write constraints related to the supply and demand. We can say that suppose this is my plant, ith plant, this plant can supply to any of these markets. So if xij is the quantity which is moving out of uh, manufacturing plant i, so this is supplying to all the possible uh, demand points that is all the J uh, demand uh, points are there this becomes the total quantity which is moving out of the plant uh, I and this cannot exceed the possible capacity or the available capacity of plant I. So obviously this has to be less than equals to S I and this is only for one plant as we have to write this constraint for all the plants possible we will include for I for all I symbol as well. This is my supply constraint. In a similar way we can write about the demand constraint as well. So suppose that we are trying to see that which plants can fulfill the requirement of this jth market over here. So this market can get the supply from plant 1, plant 2, plant 3, plant 4 and so on. So it means that if xij is a quantity which is being shipped to the market j, this can be shipped from all the possible supply points or possible production facilities uh, such that the total demand available at the market point j is satisfied. So this becomes equals to dj. Again this constraint is only for one market. So this has to be solved for all j and thus this becomes my demand constraint as well. So as you can see it is a very very simple demand allocation problem which is based on supply restriction constraint and also based on the total demand to be fulfilled. And my objective is obviously to minimize this total cost of production and transportation as xij is the quantity moved between ith plant to jth uh, market this is a non-negative value as this is representing the quantities to be moved. So this is my overall the demand allocation problem. Now once we know the formulation of our problem we will use this formulation to solve it separately for both the companies and the solutions we have shared with you in the excel uh, solution which is, uh, which is attached with this session. You can refer to the sheet and follow the formulation which is mentioned over here to see the solution that we have obtained for the demand allocation model for both the companies. So when we solve this problem uh, by allocating demand to manufacturing facilities where the objective is to minimize the total cost of uh, facilities in uh, transportation inventory, here when we solve this problem in Excel. And for solving it remember that we will be using the solver tool which we have already introduced in previous sessions as well. So the solution is just reproduced over here for your reference. We will check the excel also once again. But let us see this solution that we have got as you can see for both the companies for Maxui as well as for Wavy we have now got the quantities which requires to be moved from their respective manufacturing plants to the corresponding markets and considering that the capacities how much they have got utilized and in parallel whether the demand is completely fulfilled or not this information can also be seen from this table. So let us check this once again with the excel that we have got. So as, as shared with you we are providing you the excel solution of the demand allocation problem as well. You can see in this excel all these costs are mentioned over here which we have discussed in our previous example followed by the capacities of the manufacturing plants. Also the demands are mentioned which you can see here in green in color and the fixed costs are also given for the facilities. So when we solve this problem remember we have solved it twice 
once for the company uh, Maxui and the second time for the VV uh, uh, company and this demand allocation problem is solved twice separately for the two companies because right now we are trying to find out demand allocation for the two companies in a in an individual manner and the solutions are shown over here if you can see the excel sheets the yellow part is showing you the solution for the company Maxui and the orangish part is trying to show you the solution for the company VV. The green color of objective cost is actually the tra production transportation cost and here we have also considered shown you the fixed cost that is the plants which are playing a key role for fulfilling the requirements of this demand. Uh, corresponding to that their fixed costs are also calculated and is shown over here for your reference. So you can follow this sheet and you can uh, follow the formulation that we have discussed just now and correlating it you can see the solution that we have presented over here and now let us try to analyze this solution in detail. So if you observe the company Maxui they are not, uh, they are not utilizing their Kolkata facility and they are producing very low quantity from Kolkata facility. Reason being they have got a high cost of production and shipping even though the facility cost that is the fixed cost is incurred over here. So similarly when we analyze for the total cost for both the company we can see that Maxu is incurring around 1 crore 74 lakh 50 thousand rupees with a monthly fixed cost of around 1 crore 46 lakh whereas the total monthly cost is coming around 3 crore 20 lakh 50 thousand rupees. Parallelly the VV is also incurring a monthly variable cost of around 1 crore 57 lakh 20 thousand rupees where the fixed cost is coming around 96 lakh with a total monthly cost of 2 crore 53 lakh 20 thousand rupees. So we can see that uh, the total uh, monthly fixed cost and the total variable cost are calculated separately for these two companies. Now do we have a better solution for this scenario and what happens if we or what are the ways by which this cost can be reduced further? How the Maxui company is using their production facilities to fulfill the requirement of the markets? Similarly, how VV is utilizing their production facilities to fulfill their corresponding market demands? So on observing this pattern, let us try to find a better solution for this problem. So here we are trying to uh, introduce uh, the well known problem called as capacity plant location model where the decision is all about finding out the optimum location of the facilities such that the total cost of transportation along with the fixed cost of selection of the facility gets minimized. So here uh, the management has taken a decision that let us try to merge these two companies Maxui and Vivi and form a new company called as Maxui and then try to redesign the whole supply chain model, the complete supply chain network and try to analyze the benefits because of this new merger. So here the management has a belief that if the two networks are merged appropriately, the new company that is Maxui will be able to fulfill these market demands in lesser cost. So now we can see that Maxui has got 5 factories from where it can try to serve 6 markets. So this is the scenario once we merge these two companies together and considering these 5 factories uh, the management is trying to understand that how these 5 factories should be used and how the, uh, the supplies available from these plants should be utilized so that the total cost gets minimized. In parallel the management is also, try to, is also trying to understand that whether there is any possibility of shutting down any plant so that the uh, supply chain cost can be minimized. So here again the similar problem is solved and the model we have already discussed in the previous in the previous uh, problem. Here in this demand allocation model just one variable get, will get attached that is with respect to your objective function the total cost 
will be having two parts. The first part is about the unit cost of production and transportation cost and the second part will be about the fixed cost associated with the location of the variable. If the location variable is termed as y i where y, where y i is equals to 0 or 1 indicating whether that ith plant is being selected in your final network yes or no if it is a yes the value of y i will take the value as 1 if the if it is no the value of y i becomes 0 and suppose if f i is my fixed cost then the objective function will just get modified as z is equals to c i j into x i j summation over i comma j plus f i into y i summation over i which is the term coming because of the fixed cost to be incurred. In addition to this objective cost the other two constraints remain same which is about your demand satisfaction constraint as well as your supply limit constraints. So, your demand and capacity constraints will also get attached with this objective function and your new network design model also called as capacitated plant location problem is now formulated. So, we can solve this problem in a similar way in excel as well by using the solver function and again we have given you the solution uh, sheet along with all the instructions over here. So, let us see this part. So, this is the excel sheet you can see from here uh, the template is shown over here. The excel sheet has got all the data entered in the similar format. You can see the data about the production and transportation cost is mentioned here. The capacities, the demand and the fixed cost are mentioned here. The variables x i j are all assumed to be 0 at the beginning and is mentioned in this table and this y variable y i is indicated over here initially all are taken as 0 means we are not sure which uh, supply uh, facility is currently allocated that is why they are taken as 0. This is your capacity constraint which is mentioned over here which ensures that the total uh, sup supply from a given plant cannot exceed its capacity and these are your demand constraint which ensures that at any demand point the complete demand should be met by the supplies from the different plants and this cell will calculate your total cost of transportation and fixed cost. So, the formulas that we will be using it to populate this excel sheet are also shown over here. You can use it and try to calculate all these values. How uh, Once you have entered all these formulas and your basic sheets are ready, you can go to uh, data tab. In your data tab, we have the solver uh, function available. It is an add-in which you can install and by using this solver uh, you can set your objective which is your total cost. Because we want to do the minimization select this minimization over here. By changing variable cells indicates your decision variables cells. So, show highlight your uh, decision variable cells over here. As we have got majorly two type of constraint one is the capacity constraint and the another one is a demand constraint. So, these two are shown over here for your capacity constraints and these are shown here for your demand constraints and because the binary variable is all about selection of the facility. So, this is also indicated over here for adding the constraint please follow this button called as add. Once you click it, you need to enter the left hand side of the equation with the inequality sign and the right hand side of the equation. So, in this way you can keep adding your constraints. We have just shown you over here that what how does the final constraints will look like, but it is you can follow this step for adding a constraint over here. Because all these variables are non-negative, we will check this part which ensures that all variables follow this non-negative rule. And as this model is a simple linear programming model which can be solved through simplex LP. So, once you are done this go for solve the pro if its uh, solution is optimal you will get a message that the solution found is optimal and you can also see that all these values of decision variables and the cost will get updated and here it is also about your uh, plant decisions plants uh, location decision is has got updated and you can see that only now with this new 
supply chain network you have to install your uh, facility at chennai at gurugram and at kolkata and with this new setup now you can operate your supply chain with just three plants instead of five plants so that is one major saving as you can see from here and also your capacity constraints are shown over here your demand constraints are shown over here the total cost is coming around 52 uh, 1272 uh, rupees uh, 1000 rupees and let us try to compare the two solutions in the previous solution we have tried to solve this demand allocation problem for both the companies separately in the later part of the problem we have merged the two companies formed a new company and we have tried to design the supply chain network for the uh, bigger company as you can see that when we did, did the merger the maxwi is able to close the plants in delhi and mumbai so now it can operate only with just three plants that is one major saving and the total cost is coming around 5 crore 22 lakh 72000 rupees whereas uh, this if you compare it with the individual cost of maxwi and baby we can simply say that the merger has helped us in saving our cost to about 5 million rupees per month compared to the situation when we were operating the supply chain individually for maxwi and baby so here we have uh, tried to design our supply chain network in two ways first is we treated these companies individually and tried to solve this problem as demand allocation problem in the later part we have merged these two companies and formed a new company and for this new one we have tried to design the whole supply chain network we have now seen that how the uh, merger of the two companies has resulted us into the savings of the total cost and this can be uh, solved as an optimization model and uh, in simple tool which is available with our excel we can try to get the solution as well so with this we will close today's session and thank you for going through this session let us meet soon in the next week